Hi guys, this is Megan with the vlog WilsonHomestead.com and today I'm doing my son and Dimitri's nine month update. Hey, you're busy. He might not last through this whole video because he's getting really loud and really busy. So we'll see how long he lasts for. Chewing on potatoes. But he is seeming really big to me. And like he's all of a sudden gone through some sort of a growth spurt and he seems very different all of a sudden. But Let's just get right into this thing. So he is about 19 pounds now. I think he's a little over that. He was about that in his last update too. Seems like he should be more because he's been eating a ton. Like an unbelievable amount. And he feels heavier to me. I also know that our scale sometimes glitches up because sometimes it says I'm 115 and sometimes it says I'm 150. So. Who knows how reliable that scale is. So, I'm guessing you're at 19 pounds, because that's what it says most consistently. And yes, he eats a ton of food. He still nurses before and after his naps. So he'll wake up in the morning and nurse, and then he'll nurse before his nap, he'll nurse after his nap, he'll nurse before his nap, he'll nurse after his last nap, and then he'll nurse before bed. So it, nursing before and after he wake, wakes up every time, that's about six times a day still, and he's, he still gets like quite a bit of sustenance from that which I just love that he's still nursing actually in the morning particularly in the in the morning when he wants to have his first milkies he gets so mad and he won't let him happen like if Luke is home and he wants to hold him before he nurses stop <laughs> you're pinching me <laughs> why are you doing that <laughs> if Luke's home and he wants to hold him before he goes to work Demetrius gets so mad and he'll just like start flailing his body around and like he's just thrashing around and he'll get like he'll start like just yelling like angry yelling and he doesn't really cry when he gets mad he just like yells and thrashes his body around which when a baby starts throwing temper tantrums it is adorable like I have the hardest time not laughing it is seriously the cutest thing ever it is the cutest thing so when it does come time to wean him I'm thinking he's gonna be hard to wean and I don't have any plans to do that anytime soon. I want to at least breastfeed him to a year and longer if he will. And if my milk keeps going. But if he gets to be like three, is probably when I would wean him if he's not weaned by then. Or when I have the next baby. Because I don't really like tandem nursing. I did a little bit with these two and I don't really love it. So, whenever it comes time for him to be done, I think it's going to be a battle. Because he loves to nurse still. <laughs> Even though he eats so much food, he just still... He still doesn't draft any more feeds. He just loves it. But when he's not nursing and doing his away fairs, he loves to sit in his high chair and just eat food. And he's getting so good at his pincher grasp, he can pick up even like little raisins and put them in his mouth, which is very impressive. I'm always so proud of him for these little things. But he loves, he loves food. It's pretty funny. Because Sophia was definitely not this way. And I keep asking people who have kids older than me, like, is this a boy thing that they start eating? Like, way more at even this age because I was, I've always known about like the teenage boy thing but he's eating so much more now like sometimes he could eat as much as me like seriously because he could pretty much he could pretty easily eat an entire banana in a sitting and then after that he'll just eat like more raisins he'll eat like a handful of raisins and just other little snacky things like sometimes I'm like really shocked how much he can actually fit in there still seem comfortable. <laughs> he loves yams, he loves bananas and raisins, as I said. He loves to have even meat. He's <laughs> silly. He's been eating more of just what we have for our meals, which is really nice, so I don't have to make it something special. It was something like, that just has a few ingredients that is just easier for me to know it's safe for him. Like, meat, we'll just have the seasonings and the oil, and he can you know, that just fine. He can have potatoes with lard and salt and pepper. So if there's something we're eating with our meal, that's like a low amount of ingredients that I can like actually remember what I put in it, then he's doing really good with eating that. And that's been really fun. He just eats with us and eats whatever we're eating. But I think he must be having a growth spurt because sometimes I wonder if I should like limit him on the amount of food he eats. Because sometimes it really seems like he might explode. Like, I just don't even know where all that food goes. Like he's just like a little guy still. Like his belly's not that big. So I don't even know where he's putting it. But I'm sure he'll stop when he's full. 
because she is kind of surprising sometimes. He has started doing this cutest, the cutest thing with his smile. Whenever he smiles, he scrunches up his nose like he's tasting something sour or something. I don't know. But he does it whenever he smiles. It is literally the cutest thing ever. Whenever he smiles, it's just like so cute and I just want to laugh because it's hilarious that he's doing that. I just hope he does that for a while because he will start doing something like that that's really cute and then it won't last very long. But I really hope this lasts for a while because it's so cute. He hasn't gotten any more teeth since the last update, which is surprising because he gets a lot of teeth really fast. But it's been kind of nice to have a little bit of a break from the teething and just being in pain at night and so it's been nice for both of us to have a break. In the last update, in his eight month update, I talked about him maybe being sick or maybe teething really bad. He wasn't feeling very well and I didn't quite know what was going on with him. I didn't know if he was getting a cold or, or what. He, he was like really not feeling well. I was starting to get a little bit worried and even had some weird some weird thing happen with a soft spot because he was a few days before this he had had just a, a little fever. I think it only got up to 100 so just kind of a mild fever and I gave him some Tylenol which I hate having to do Tylenol but I also didn't want him to be miserable. And we were also about to go to bed, and so I just didn't want to have to worry about his fever getting worse in the middle of the night. So I gave him the Tylenol. And he hadn't really had a fever again after that. He was still just seeming kind of icky though. And then a few days after that, he his soft spot seemed a little bit puffy. And I don't know about you other mamas, but I noticed like the tiniest, minutest details in my children. <laughs> and like no one else would even have noticed it at all. Like Luke was like, what are you talking about? It was just like the tiniest little bit raised. And so I texted my midwife and asked her about it and she said that fevers can cause a puppy soft spot, so that is normal. And also, it's more worrisome if their soft spot is sunken in. So, to just keep an eye on it, but that probably was no big deal. Which made me feel a lot better because I definitely worry about stuff like that. But the next day it went down and it's been normal ever since, so it was probably just from his fever. He might have had a really super mild fever, like maybe just like 99 at that point, but thankfully now he's feeling a lot better. He seems to be totally over it, and it's so nice because he was waking up so much during the night, and I was just worried about him, and he was so fussy during the day that I would have to just carry him around all day, so it was like hard to get anything done. But I'm so happy that he's feeling better because I hate to see my baby sick. And I, at this point, still don't even know if it was just a cold or really bad healing because they can have the same symptoms with either thing, so who knows. But he has been entertaining himself a lot more during the day now that he's feeling better. He is just such a content guy in general, just so happy. He can just entertain himself so well for how good he is. And it's his absolute favorite thing, if that's even a word. It's his favorite thing if his sister will play with him. I'll set him in the living room floor and she'll bring toys, and she'll rub his head, and she'll give him a kiss, and she'll like play with him. It's just so cute. And both of them love it. It's like just adorable how much they love playing together. His nighttime wakings have gotten so much better. After he got after, after he got over his sickness, they were a ton better in general. But he was still waking up like four times a night about just having put his pinky back. He didn't need to eat or anything, he just had dropped his pinky and wanted it put back. So I decided that it was time to teach him to sleep without it because he's getting old enough and I'm just getting to the point where I was tired of waking up so many times. Because <laughs> even though I didn't need to be up for very long, it still is breaking up my sleep cycles and making me exhausted during the day. <laughs> so we did a little bit of sleep training. It only took like two days, seriously. And the first night he cried for like maybe half an hour and I was going in there every five minutes. I We kind of used a variation of the fervor method with sleep training and he didn't cry very long at all. And then when he did fall asleep, he slept through the entire night, and every night since then, as long as he doesn't have his binky, he will sleep through the night. Apparently, I didn't really realize that it was waking him up so much to just have it fall out, and then he would realize it was gone, but if he starts off without it, he just assumes he won't have it, and it's so nice. It's so amazing. I set him over there to play because he's very wiggly and smiling so much. So needless to say, both of us are so much happier and more well-rested. More well-rested. <laughs> I don't even know if that's the right way to phrase it. We're a lot better rested. We're, we've gotten more sleep. We're more rested. He's still sleeping in our room, and since he's been doing so well, I think I'm gonna wait until he can go an entire week without like uh, really waking us up at all, because he does here and there. Like every week or so, he will wake up 
And most of the time he actually will put himself to sleep. But like very, very rarely, like maybe one or two times since he's been not needing his binky, I've actually had to go over there and just like pet his head for a minute and then I'll go back to bed and he'll be fine. So it's not really a big deal. But I also don't want to have to run upstairs every time he needs me. So I'm like trying to wait until he can go like a week stretch and not need me at all. And then he will move upstairs into his own room. <laughs> and it'll be really nice to just have our bedroom back because we he goes to bed before us and we have to like sneak in here all quiet when it's time for us to go to bed. And it's just, it's not the end of the world. And he, it's so nice that he's in his own bed at least. And he does really well for the most part with any noises we make while we're sleeping. But it just will be nice, like kind of a stress off of me while I'm sleeping. Just like, it's just always in my mind that he's in there and then I don't want to wake him up. And then I always try to stop Luke from making noise in his sleep. And it'll just be better when he's sleeping on his own. And then once he's actually more mobile and can get away, we'll put them both in the same room. I just don't want to do it yet because he can't really get away from her if she's like in there poking his eye in the middle of the night. So once he's like crawling really well and like pulling himself up on stuff, they will sleep in the same room, which will be interesting. I'm not sure how that will go, but hopefully they'll get used to it pretty quickly. <laughs> he is down to two naps a day now, which, and I hadn't even realized that he had transitioned from three naps to two naps until like yesterday. And I was like, wait a minute, it's been like two weeks since he's been only taking two naps a day. But, so that was a really smooth transition and he is just able to be awake a lot longer now and he just does really well with it. And then now that he's down to those naps, they're actually longer, which is really nice. He seems to be getting a little bit more active really slowly. He can roll more, he, he just rolls more often and he can roll faster. And also if I put him on his hands and knees, he can like lift one of his hands up off the ground and balance on three limbs, which is really impressive. <laughs> He still can't get to that position by himself, but he seems to be more interested in trying. He also, if I sit him up in the middle of the room, he's more sturdy. I can trust him for longer to not fall over. He just seems to finally have a little bit more of an interest in moving, so that's exciting. But I think that's pretty much all for Jimmy's nine month update. He's just getting so big and he's so cute and so funny and such a little ham. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed his nine month update and I will see you next time. Bye.